I'll give you three guesses as to what we're doing. Today's video is brought to you by Fractal Design. Fractal Design first turned heads with the Define series many years ago, and they do so again with cases like those in their all new Pop series. Available in a wide variety of colors and designs, the Pop Air brings attitude to airflow. It boasts an iconic mesh front panel for high airflow and easy fan access, along with colorful internal panels, drive trays, and accents to make your build, well, pop. Any budget, any build, Fracta Design has a case for you. Take the Meshify 2 Lite, for example, with four included RGB Aspect 14 fans, support for motherboards up to EATX, and a wide open internal layout, it's the perfect foundation for your next build. There's no reason to strain your wallet to impress your friends. Fractal offers many elegant cases for the budget-conscious builder. And for the rest of the month, you can get the Meshify 2 Lite on sale. So if you're looking for just the right case to finish off your latest build, make sure to follow the links down in the video description. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And yeah, it's new server day again. When I saw this one on eBay for $259, I knew immediately I had to have it. And that's for a very specific reason, because it will fit all three of these graphics cards into a 1U form factor. So inside this box, if I remember the model number correctly, is the Supermicro 1029GRTR. And like I mentioned, it is a 3GPU 1U server with a pair of 2011 V3 Intel sockets on board. There we go. All right. So inside the box, it looks like we have nothing but the 1U server plus a pair of power supplies. And in this case, these are Delta power supplies that are 1000 watts each at 110 volts. So this unit shipped as a bare bone unit and included is a pair of Xeon E5 2660 V3 eight core CPUs, as well as 32 gigs of memory. And also interestingly enough on the tag, it says it has a pair of Tesla K80s inside. Although I'm not sure if that's actually true, nor does the eBay listing that I bought this from list that. So, uh, hey, maybe I got a free pair of K80s, who knows? But those who have been watching the channel for a long time know that a pair of 10 core CPUs just isn't gonna quite cut it for me. So instead, I picked up a pair of E5 2698 V3 CPUs, which are 16 cores and 32 threads each, giving me a total of 32 cores and 64 threads, all in this tidy little 1U package. I'm also upgrading the system memory on this quite substantially, from 32 gigabytes to 256 gigabytes of DDR4 registered ECC. Also on the table, you might have noticed a very interesting mix of GPUs. Neither of these models I have used before, and yeah, we're gonna install both AMD and Nvidia GPUs into this server right here, starting with the one on the top, which is an Nvidia Grid M40. Nvidia Grid is the system that I've used in the past for bifurcating a GPU and splitting its power to multiple virtual machines. And this card right here was actually dedicated to be used for that, more for CAD workstations or video editing rigs instead of cloud gaming machines. But the use case is pretty much the same. This GPU is a very interesting one as it's not just one GPU, it's four GPU dies on a single card. Each of these are a GM107 GPU core based on the Maxwell architecture with three gigabytes of video memory each. You might recognize the GM107 from the GTX 1070 Ti, but these unfortunately are not even that fast. This is essentially a cut down version of a 750 Ti, more equivalent to a GTX 745 with only 384 CUDA cores. But we still have three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory per each GPU. So this should get us four 720p gaming machines off of a single card that only costs about 120 bucks. And now for a couple cards, I have been waiting a very long time to get my hands on. This is the AMD Radeon Instinct MI25, although you may know it better from its consumer name, the Vega 64. 
Inside this GPU is the same 64 shader cores from the Vega 64, but interestingly enough, with a higher boost clock up to 1500 megahertz. The memory has also been increased from 8 gigabytes of HBM2 to 16 gigabytes of HBM2. Best of all, these cards are MX GPU compliant, meaning you can actually split them up with SRIOV, no licensing required. So what I'm hoping to build today is a one use server that will give me eight gaming virtual machines, four at 720p and four at 1080p, all for about $1,300, not including the cost of storage. So let's go ahead and start getting this thing together and see if it's actually going to work. All right, it is the next day, and as you can see, the server is pretty much completely put together. I did run into a couple light snags when getting the GPUs installed, mainly around the power delivery. I should have realized that the power cords were going to be proprietary to this server, and they're a little bit unique in that the board has 8-pin PCI Express female headers on it, and those go out to 8-pin EPS headers that are normally used by NVIDIA Tesla cards. Well, ironically enough, I'm using three Enterprise GPUs and none of them have 8-pin EPS connectors on the inputs. This NVIDIA grid card only uses an 8-pin PCI Express connector, and the AMD MI25s use dual 8-pin PCI Express connectors. So we're going to have to adapt those before we can actually get the server up and running. The good news though is that all of the GPUs physically fit inside the server and I think the fan speed is going to be more than adequate to keep these cards cool. Yeah, this is one of the loudest 1U servers I've ever built. Once the power cords finally get here, I think next Tuesday, I can finally get all of the GPUs permanently installed into this and get everything up and running. Now, it's still going to be quite a bit of tinkering on my end to get the NVIDIA grid card as well as the MX GPUs on the MI25s all configured. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss probably those two separate videos. In the meantime, if you're interested in any of the parts from today's build, I will have eBay affiliate links down in the video description. Make sure to go give those a look as they really do help out the channel. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Here for today is from Silver Falls Brewing out of Silverton, Oregon. It is the Oregon Sunshine Hazy IPA clocking in at 6.1%. All right, Oregon sunshine with the raindrop on the front. Gotta say, I love the implication there. All right, let's give this one a shot. A little bit dry, 
very, very bright, very playful for a hazy IPA. Um, this is definitely akin to some more hazy IPAs from the last four or five years, where it's a little bit acidic. It's kind of that same very bitter, very leafy hop flavor. Uh, but definitely, definitely enjoyable and pretty refreshing, especially for a hot day like today. Yeah, I, I kind of like this. It's a lighter bodied, acidic, hazy IPA. So this is something that would be absolutely refreshing as a lawnmower beer. I, I use that reference a lot, but something where you've been working outside in the sun for a couple hours and you want something a little bit more than, you know, a domestic lager or a pilsner. This might be just the upgrade you're looking for.